You know, I had a conversation one time with former chief of staff, General John Kelly, and we had a cocktail. We were at a financial conference. He was the guest speaker. And I candidly asked him a question. I said, what do you enjoy the most about working for President Trump? And what what did you least enjoy the most? Or what was your biggest uh, issue with him? And he goes, my biggest problem with President Trump was that he was not willing to listen to experts. This is his former chief of staff, General John Kelly, telling me this. This is what he said. Okay. Um, We just went down the list. Gary Cohen, um, Mick Mulvaney, General Mattis, uh, General Kelly, Bill Barr, you said it was potentially a bad hire. Uh, Even Mike Pence at this point is not exactly in best favor with Trump, although I think he was a very loyal vice president. John Bolton, not exactly a fan. Um, If Trump is elected again, Yes. What, how much should he actually listen to experts and how much should he go with his gut? Like you even gave the example of you think that Fauci lied to him, right? Who he keeps around him. So if you're Trump. But he didn't know that at the time. Right. Well, you never know if someone's lying to you up front. Like you kind of find out in the end. But to be clear. Yeah. uh, If Trump gets elected again, how much should he trust the advisors around him? Who should he, we just went through this list versus just kind of go with his gut and do it by himself? What do you recommend? So um, I had an interesting relationship um, with John Kelly. I admire a man who puts on a uniform and puts his life at risk out in places like Afghan, like Afghanistan, and has a and, and basically sacrifices one of his sons to that war because he lost a son there. Um, Kelly uh, was not suited for being chief of staff in the Trump White House. He should have stayed at the Department of Homeland Security. He understood border security and national security issues, and he would have done a good job there. But when Kelly came in, um, he committed the, the Corey Lewandowski, Dave Bossy ultimate sin was he didn't understand to let Trump be Trump. And letting Trump be Trump means actually being able to listen, not just to experts, but to everybody. And what Donald Trump loves to do every day, and he, he's got the discipline. He, he's the hardest working man in show business. Trust me on that. Um, what he loves to do every day is, is scan all of the media. Right? He reads everything. He's, he's watching TV, picking up all that. And then he's on the phone most of the day or he's got in-person meetings with people asking him about issues. And he values people in the streets' opinions as much as he does some of the so-called experts. And so... What Kelly says that, what Kelly means is that he wouldn't listen to some of his advisors who he figured out pretty early on didn't, weren't on the Trump train, um, and Kelly wouldn't let him listen to others. I mean, Kelly used to eavesdrop on conversations. You see, the boss, what the boss would do at night, you know, if you wanted to talk to the boss, and I had to do this a number of times, it's like... It's like Kelly wouldn't let you talk to him, so I, I just called him at night, right? It's, you know, it's like, and then the next day, it's like, Kelly, what did you call the boss for? He said, I had to talk to him. He's like, I'm, assi- I'm an assistant to the president. I'm the highest rank. I don't report to you. I report to you. So they have that conversation. But the point is that um, that's a bad rap. That's just wrong. And Kelly's mistake when he came in is he fell in with the wrong people, particularly on the trade issue. I mean, he went right with Mnuchin and Cohn and Rob Porter at the staff secretary office, and they did everything possible with Kelly helping them to stop the steel and aluminum tariffs, to stop the China tariffs. And, and the boss, like, looks up, like, six months later, and he goes, you know, where's my Peter? That was his rallying cry. He, he pulls me in. There's a famous scene in the book about how I go in there mano a mano with Gary Cohn, and it's like, it's like the boss finally says, no, we're going to do this, and, and we did it. And then shortly thereafter, Cohn's out the friggin' door. But that was Kelly's fault because Kelly tried to wall the boss off and, and wall people like me off who supported the Trump stuff, which he viewed, frankly, as dangerous. And he, he went with the, 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 the regular line. And 
you know, it's, uh, that's the sad thing was there's a there's a poignant moment in the book where we're sitting in Buenos Aires, Argentina, and it's like one of Kelly's last days. He's know he's out the door. He's sitting right by me, and he apologizes. And he basically says, you know, it's like, you were one of the good guys, and I'm sorry I didn't get that right. And I said, you know, John, that's cool, man. We're good. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.